Welcome everyone. Uh, I am the Diligent Rascal. It is Monday the 8th of January 2018. Thanks for joining me again on this uh, miserable Monday. Um, I've got a video for you today. It's like, um, it's one of them, it's been a long time coming kind of thing. Um, I should have really made it a long time ago, but I, I, I never did. Um, I've been doing these videos for a long time and I've been an advocate of this for a long time. Um, and it's cannabis um cannabis um regulation and uh reclassifying and ultimately legalization um for many reasons which i will cover in this video today so yeah like i say it is monday the 8th of january hope everyone's doing well after the new year um need some more followers on my channel please um that would be awesome um basically this video was spurred on a little bit by myself the other day. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I rang into James O'Brien on LBC, and I've rung in a few times now. Um, but this time, I just missed Sadiq Khan, the mayor of London. Uh, he was on there. He was on there quite a bit. And this is my video from my channel, Diligent Rascal. Okay? Get onto this channel if you're not already subscribed. Now, this is a video that um, I made the other day from my call. And it is me talking to James O'Brien for about five minutes about knife crime. Um, because I listened to Sadiq Khan talking. And he was talking about stop and searches, how they're going to increase it. Because knife, knife crime has increased and they need to increase it. So he was talking about stop and searches. But what he said was... The main reason for the stop and searches wasn't actually knives. It was actually drugs. Um, and everybody kind of missed that. So I rang in. I just missed Sadiq. And I was talking to James O'Brien. So please watch this video. Um, I would play it now. But I'm not going to. I want to get that video. People watching that video. Because it's got some other links. Like you say down here. To other videos from James O'Brien. Because I do, I do like him. There's a few things that I don't like about him. Uh, one of them is the fact that he bashes Corbyn whenever he can. Um, that winds me up a little bit. Um, but overall he's got a platform he's doing what he can out there and i ring in with my two penny worth and what has actually happened is i have been invited back to talk to sadiq khan after the call if you listen to the call uh, if you check out the video um live on air he says look to beth his researcher or his producer whoever it was i spoke to after they stopped me after and said look uh, james wants you to talk to sadiq khan next time he's on so can we take your number so they took my details and uh, what is going to happen next time when sadiq khan is on with with him uh, i'm going to get a phone call or something maybe a day before or something um or whatever i'll keep my eye out for it anyway and if anything call in if they don't call me um but i will be speaking to Sadiq Khan, uh, which is a little bit mental, I think. I still kind of can't get over it in my head. It's a little bit mental. Like I say, if you just watch, watch the video, listen to the call, and you will see, you know, my conversation with James O'Brien, where ultimately what I say is knife crime in this country. Um, anyone listening from America it might be different over there because you have guns. We don't have guns. Um, but over here, knife crime is a big thing. Um, over here is a big thing uh, with youths and even I saw a video on, on Facebook the other day where there was a fully grown man who attacked two um, I'll say kids but you know like teenagers uh, on the train in London uh, it was at Highbury and Islington station I believe and uh, there's a video online um, where you see this guy kind of with a knife waving it and you know ultimately he gets knocked out and gets put on his ass. but um, that's a fully grown dude but in this country we do have a problem with knives and I was basically saying that ultimately knife crime in this country would be reduced or at least alleviated a little bit if they legalise cannabis because what we find is these d drugs that these gangs that are stabbing each other uh, predominantly sell cannabis and that's how they make their money so you know and there's also other reasons to legalize it as well we're looking at money at the moment everyone's talking about money and no one's got no money and we ain't got no money for this and funding that well I mean you I'll show you in this later on in this video we'll go over some numbers you know th th there's a it's a no-brainer argument now for it because the market's clearly there it becoming legal isn't creating a market the market's already there the demand's already there um, so yeah, check out my call. This is me, the diligent rascal on LBC with James O'Brien from the other day. And, um, 
you know, I have been invited back to speak to Sadiq Khan. Uh, they've got my details. They're going to give me a call or I'm going to call in or whatever. And I will speak to him because I'm going to quiz him up. Because ultimately, I think in this country, we are living in the dark ages when it comes to things like that. I want to see some progressive policies. I don't want to see some any more of these laws that are clearly not working. You know, the, the definition of insanity, uh, as Einstein said, I believe it was Einstein. I don't know, it could have been bloody anyone. But ultimately, <laughs> the, the, the thing is, uh, the definition of insanity is using the same methods over and over again, expecting a different result. And that's what we're looking at here. We're looking at them using the same methods. There's even a guy, uh, Michael Wood. He's a policeman. I've spoke about him in another video. He, he, he looks for the, the decriminalization of all drugs. Uh, he wants all drugs to be legal. And he was talking about um, them using the same tired policies and the same tired procedures and the same tired police tactics. He's saying that they've been using these things since like the 60s and 70s. They've been using the same, you know, drug enforcement, um, uh, not policies, you know, like tactics and that with the same corners and the same families, the same dealers and that. Like, it's incredible. Uh, these old things are just not working. They're clearly not working. Um, so check out my call. Um with James O'Brien on LBC, <clears throat> and it, we, we were talking about knife crime, but ultimately we got on to um, cannabis reform and legalisation. So check out my video. I will post it in the uh, in the in the description and that, so you can have a look. Um, and what happened today was um, I was on a pal's. Um, thing on Facebook and I said something uh, it was about LBC and I ended up posting this up and one of his mates um, a mutual friend we have this guy as a mutual friend basically spoke to me and just said oh man you know this is incredible this guy's called Sam um, and he's got a company called Canasaurs UK and it, he, uh, he sells CBD oil um, and CBD oil is something incredible. Um, you know, we could talk about the THC and CBD oils, but at the moment we're talking because it's legal, we're talking CBD oil. Um, you know, it's incredible. Um, I take it myself. Uh, I take uh, fairly high strength CBD oil. Um, and I tell you what, it is knocked. I, I, you know, everybody knows that feeling when you're just getting ill and you're starting to feel a bit rough, your, your shoulders get a bit sore, your body gets a bit tired, you get a headache, your, your throat's hurting and that, you're like, right, I've got something, you know, something's just kicking in. So, you know, I, I, I've got the 1,000 milligram really high strength stuff. And I'm sorry, Sam, but I mean, you know, mate, I, I didn't buy it from Canisaurs, uh, UK. I got it from another company um, because they do the really high strength stuff. And, um, you know, I've, I've just used them so they're, and they're good. So I just use them. Um, but I use a really high strength and it knocked out this cold. Everyone around me was getting ill. Even my missus, who is a teacher and she like, you know, never gets ill. Uh, she was ill. Um, everyone around me was ill, and I wasn't. I got a little bit rough, um, but came the CBD over a few days, and I, I was fine. Um, you know, and that has happened twice or three times since I've actually started using it. So, um, and it's used for lots of other stuff anyway. Um, and you'll see in my video now. I'm going to give you. I'm going to show you examples of how it works, exactly how it works, exactly what it does. And there is no end to the possibilities of what this plant is used for. It is really a magic plant. If ever there was some mythical plant that was magic and had properties of, you know, you know, magical properties, it is this plant. And I will show you examples of that. Um, so thank you, Sam, for bigging up my video. He's reposted my video as well. So hopefully a few people get to watch it on the back of that. So big up, mate. And also what he said as well, which is a nice thing. Uh, he said, for the work I'm doing in pushing this uh, agenda, is going to give me something nice off the site. So have a look on there, guys, if you, uh, if you can get on there. Uh, Canisaurs UK. OK, go and have a look at that. And that is the that there. All right, guys. Uh, Sam is a nice chap. Uh, big up yourself, fellow. Nice one. Um, this is 
that was my call anyway that I posted up, but please go and check that out. Um, and what we're talking about is um, cannabis reform and legalization of cannabis. So I haven't done a video on this and I should have done it for many, many years, but I haven't done it. Um, and I don't really know why. Um, I'm starting to think that it's maybe because this is the, this is the year. Um, this is going to be the year where ultimately the world comes to its senses um, and people are allowed the medicine that helps them live their life. Um, you know, let, we can only hope. Um, so check out my video. Um, and also what I spoke to Sam about from Canisters was the fact that um, on the 23rd of February in the UK, we have got the legalization of cannabis for medicinal purposes bill. Um, and it is in its second reading, all right? And what that means is, uh, in the babble of of politics, it means it's there. <laughs> it's on its second reading, all right? So then it gets to this stage, this stage, this stage, and then it goes to the House of Lords, and then it gets royal assent into a law. But the thing is, these did. I'm pretty sure these things can be pushed through, and they do get pushed through on public opinion. And what um, Sam said to me was that there is a protest. He is actually linked with the uh, Patients Alliance. And uh, there is a little protest going on on the 23rd of February when this bill is getting read. So if anyone can make it on that day down to the House of Commons on the 23rd of February 2018, if you can get down there, please, guys, get down there because... The fact is, like I say, after what I'm going to show you today, if you're not already an advocate of it, you may well be after this. Because if you're a logical person who thinks about things logically, then you cannot watch what I'm going to show you. Uh, you cannot see this stuff and be in any kind of doubt then that this stuff works and it does have medicinal benefits. There's no doubt about it. There's already no doubt about it, the fact that it's less harmful than alcohol. So we can't even really have that conversation, oh, you know, um, it's harmful. Well, it's not. It's not harmful like alcohol and not even close. Um, they actually did a study recently um, that finished and it was like a 40 year study or 30 year study, one of these really, really long range studies. I think the only one that they've done it and it finished recently. And they found that the only health detrimental effects that people had from constant use of cannabis, check this out, bad breath, bad breath. And that ultimately comes from probably people falling asleep and not brushing their teeth uh, or eating munchies or whatever. I don't know what it is if you want to be stereotypical like that. But, you know, the only long term health effects from it was bad breath. <laughs> All right. So. You know, we can't even argue that anymore. There's been, there's a lot of studies done. They get covered up. They don't come out in the press. But these things are happening. And I'll show you proof today to, to prove that the, the, this is real. Um, so if you can make it on the 23rd of February, get down to the House of Parliament, the House of Commons, sorry, and get down there. All right. Uh, and join us down there just for a, a little chat. Um and whatnot so it'd be lovely to get people together like-minded people who are trying to push this agenda because we see that this agenda has been stopped um at a certain point because let, let, let's be clear here we're not talking about something that is is known to kill people we're not talking about heroin we're not talking about cocaine ultimately i think those things should probably be legal anyway but that's another conversation um but we're not talking about something that we everybody clearly knows is dangerous um we're talking about something that is a plant that has been used for thousands and thousands of years on this planet um and people know that it, it helps medically it's been known from you know medieval times you know qu kings and queens have used it you know so people know about the medicinal benefits any kind of um native people know about this plant if it grows near them um so we're not talking about something that is massively harmful we know it's not really harmful at all um so let's get down there let's have a chat guys and let's get on this because w this is not just a medical issue it's it's also an issue of revenue it's also an issue of resources it's a massive issue with a lot of things all right because there's a lot of stuff that you can make from this plant you can make like i say i'll cover at the end of the video all the stuff you can make with it yeah it's, it's actually ridiculous all right and that'll probably be a whole 
video in itself. Um, the fact that the f- one of the first cars that was ever made by Ford was made all from hemp. Um, you know, and these are the things that the plastic that is made from the oils from the seeds and, and, and the plant itself is actually stronger and more durable than any plastic that can be made from normal oil. And these are things that people just don't know or they just don't care. But if they did know, would they care? And this is what this video is trying to do. Get the truth out there and get people knowing this stuff. Um, so here we go. This is the bill. All right. And we're talking about revenue as well. Um, what we're seeing in America at the moment, this is also another talking point because you've got Jeff Sessions coming out and now trying to, what happened was um, Barack Obama had some laws that basically relaxed the federal uh, interference in the states that had legalized cannabis. So basically in those states where people had taken the votes and people had decided, right, this is what's going to happen, he decided that he would give the powers to, to the police that they would be able to relax them kind of laws and they wouldn't really enforce them because of what, you know, the mitigating circumstances or whatever. So he wrote those things in. And now Jeff Sessions is coming out and saying, we're going to get rid of all that now and we're going to make it, you know, the feds are basically going to come in and make this illegal again properly, which is fucking ridiculous. If you look at the... um the evidence and that is overwhelming really and i also show you an article here that shows that he's a plonker and he doesn't know what he's talking about um so it's a question of revenue as well because this this is another thing that sadiq khan was talking about he was talking about revenue and the cuts and things like that where it's a no-brainer mate it's a no-brainer the amount of money and revenue that this is going to bring in is actually ridiculous if people think about it um, if they look elsewhere around the world you know even people you know over here like we're saying cannabis legalization in the uk would raise one billion a year in taxes one billion a year this is a study um that says look this is how much money you're missing out on and this is another thing i wanted to talk to sadiq khan about and i'll probably talk to him about it next time that we're not just talking about it's going to help with knife crime we're talking it's going to help with jobs it's going to create a whole industry and this is another thing that people gets kind of lost on people and people don't really think about it um there's a whole industry that comes with this there's a whole hydroponics industry there's a whole you know people buying equipment and buying seeds and buying soil and you know things like that and spending more money on electric and like you know uh, there's a lot of stuff it's a whole money going into the country um these things are real these things are real this is what i'm talking about uh and so in the uk to raise one billion a year in taxes how much money is going to be put in just to make that much tax we're talking billions and billions of pounds here people are going to be spending like i say the the market is already there the market's already there. People that know of its medical benefits want it. People that want to use it recreationally want it, and they're going to push for it, and it's going to happen. It is going to happen this year. Um, cannabis legalization would raise $1 billion a year in taxes. Okay? Um, w- there was a fella called Professor Nutt um, who I've spoken about in previous videos, and basically he was hired by the government to reclassify drugs. And what he did, he took the list of drugs away and he reclassified them, and he basically said, all these things that you say are harm- harmful are not really that harmful. Uh, alcohol's the main one up there with tobacco. Um, and basically they told him to F off, uh, we're not listening to you, and um, you're sacked. They fired him. Um, I think it mentions him here somewhere. Um, you know, see, the, what they're saying here is, you know, the, the plans uh, for medical use cannabis would also be home cultivation. Um, they'll be able, adults will be able to buy it from single purpose stores, you know, like Colorado and whatnot. Um, you know, so it's really a no brainer um, when we're talking about this. Um, it really is a no brainer. Um, so the money it could raise in the UK, but if you look at things, you know, Colorado actually topped 1 billion in sales in 2016. I think they did it actually in October. There we go. They did it in 10 months. They didn't even take a year to pass a billion. You know, the customer base is already there. Um, the customer base is already there. People want it. Uh, and it will, and it happened. And this, this is the money that's getting poured into it by the people. Um, these... These states that legalized it, um, you know, they had an excess of money. They had too much money. They were giving it to neighbor states to help with schools and stuff. Like, this is a no-brainer. If you want to talk about, um, you know, an economic crisis, you know, this, again, this magical plant could bring us out of this economic crisis. It really could. It's a no-brainer anymore. It really it really is. Um, 
there we go. And, and another article talking about the, the, the governors of these states. You know, once they get used to getting this revenue in, you know, they're not going to want to do without it. You know, it says here states are addicted to cannabis tax revenues. According to a new report from New Frontier Data, states who have legalized marijuana are on track to generate approximately 655 million in state taxes, retail sales in 2017. Within that tax figure, 559 million will come just from cannabis taxes. And that is a hell of a lot more than alcohol taxes, which it says here. You know, so, I mean, come on, man. Like, it's a no-brainer. Like, we've all seen people out on a night out, smashed on alcohol, being violent, being stupid, you know, being fools. But this beautiful, beautiful plant, you know, doesn't do that to people. But yet it's illegal. And it can make us a hell of a lot of money and get us out of the, the shizzle that we're out in right now. Um, and here we talk about this this knobhead, um, Jeff Sessions, um, basically saying that the federal, um, the Fed's going to get involved now. Um, those powers before that were relaxed are now going to be enforced or whatnot. Um, he's going to they're going to take formal action on marijuana um, when they said they weren't going to. Um, but the thing is, this is this is also a point that, that I don't think those governors of those states are going to want to do with that money, uh, are going to not want that money anymore. And I think when ultimately when they talk to these guys and say, look, we, we get this much revenue uh, from this, so you can take a bigger cut of money or whatever, but you're not stopping this. And it, it, they, it, they can't. They can't. Especially in California now where it's happened, there's been a Democratic vote. There you go. Um, so this ain't going to happen really, I don't think. Um, but we will see. Um, just keep an eye on that. The geezers are knobhead. Trump's a knobhead. They're all knobheads. Um, so what we're talking about as well. So we're talking about the money. We're talking about the revenue that's going to be generated. We're going to talk, we're talking about the jobs. We're talking about the industry. Uh, we're talking about textiles and stuff can be produced from it. A lot of stuff can be produced from it. That, in the end of this video, I'll show you a few. Um, so these industries are ju they will just boom, you know. And the amount of money in that is going to create the amount of e more ecologically friendly answers to things. You know, we're going to be able to make plastics from from oils that are not harmful to the planet um and also as a bonus they're stronger and more durable you know these are things that are fact it's truth it's unrefutable um so i'm going to show you some examples now of <coughs> the medical benefits which is the most um heart-wrenching and the most you know convincing argument <laughs> excuse me i'll just have a bit of tea yeah so they're the the, the medical uh, side of it is the most, I think, convincing argument of all. So when when you see these these cases, what what you got to think about is <clears throat> if that was your child, or a child of a friend, or your nan, or your uncle, or your dad, or your mum, what what would you do? What would you do when you watch one of these videos? You know. Are you, you know, we all know people that are suffering and struggling with disease. Uh, we, we all know those people. Some of us, some people that are listening are those people. So, you know, what would you do? You know, if, if, if you watch one of these videos, you know, you can't dismiss it. You know, we know that this helps. And when these videos are so vital so vital into changing people's minds. I think this is why ultimately the tide has, has turned, is because of these kind of videos that I'm going to show you. Um, they're just too, they're just too real for people to dismiss anymore. I mean, the age of the internet. People say a lot of stuff about the internet, but the fact is, information can go from one side of the world to the other in seconds, not even, and it can be spread around. You know, and sometimes yes bad news um, and, and f fake news, fucking hate that term, you know, um, bullshit travels quickly around the internet, but also truth does. And this is what we're seeing, and it's the tide of that. You know, what we, what is happening in America with legalization and medical benefits and stuff being pushed is seen all around the world, and all these other places in the world that are doing it is being seen now. Um, and, and people can't refute it, and I'm going to show you some videos now. If you, if you doubt, if you are one of these people that for ideological reasons just 
hate drugs and and we all know one of those people as well that are just because of they're from a certain class or they're from a certain background or they've had something happen to them in their life where they've had an experience with someone who's a drug taker that is a bad one um and they they would think these things that's that's fine you know but we've got to, you've got to get over those those ideals in your head and that ideology we've really got to get over that and start looking at what is actually the truth and let's be honest like with alcohol if, if someone is a dickhead before they are drunk when they get drunk they're an even bigger dickhead right if someone is a dickhead before they smoke a joint or sniff a line they're going to be an even bigger dickhead probably when they're on it so if someone's lazy and they smoke weed they're probably going to be even lazier you know it's a it's a personality thing it's not a substance thing and this is another thing about the, the, the stigma of drug use uh, and, and drug addicts, that stigma of, oh, you know, it's, um, you know, the, su the substance got hold of them and all that. No, it's, it's a personality thing. We've got to be realistic about drug addicts as well. You know, they've got to be treated correctly. And you can treat people chemically for the addiction of the substance all you like. But if you don't help people mentally with the issues that are causing that addiction, then it's not going to change. And this is why drugs is a medical issue, if anything, and a psychological issue. People that are addicted to these substances physically, they need to be help helped medically. And they also need to be helped mentally and spoken to by people that know what they're talking about. So... It's not an issue about the drugs. It's all about humans. <laughs> That's what, because it's a human issue. Okay? So, right, where was I going? We were talking about the medical benefits now. <clears throat> so forget those stigmas. Forget anything you think you know about cannabis and watch these videos and see how these people, how would these people's lives would be or lack of life in some of the aspects. They'd be dead, some of these people. Um, if they didn't break the law and make that choice, there's... And, and to use cannabis. Um, <clears throat> there's one particular video that really winds me up and I will stop it at the points in the video where I get annoyed because even the host of the show, which is Mr. Schofield um, and Holly Willoughby, um, Philip Schofield interrupts and at one point and says something like, oh, it's not a cure, it's not a cure, but and after the story you just heard and I'll play it to you, how he could turn around and say that, he's just like clicking into robot mode oh, oh shit we can't we can't legitimize it on this show Fuck, what are we doing um you know forget what you think you know and watch these videos and then tell me that this you know this shouldn't be legal anyone that knows already knows this but if you don't know please watch these videos i'll talk you through them and what's going on and you know you can see you know it's a no-brainer this stuff is a, a, a medicine it is a resource, it is a mental health tool, it is something that can boost the economy, it can boost industry as a whole industry in itself. Um, you know, the possibilities are endless with this plant and the reasons for it being illegal are now being seen to be bogus as they are. Um, so please, guys, watch these videos. I'll talk you through some of them. Um, so here we go. It, you know, this this is the most convincing evidence, and we see these videos all the time, but people kind of dismiss it. But I want you to think about what you're seeing. You know, if if someone was to come on uh, TV and and show you this video, but instead of cannabis, it was like some, you know, some medical drug that they invested millions into you know, finding out if it works and all that, you know, research and development or whatnot, you know, and they come around and said, right, we got this from that, you know, it's a miracle drug. You'd be like, oh, wow, you know, but because of what it is, your ideology and your mind won't let you believe it. But the fact is the truth is the truth and you have to believe it. Um, so this video here, this, this is the one. Um, it is on ITV. It was on this morning, uh, Holly Willoughby and Philip Schofield and, the story of this is absolutely incredible. Um, and I have to basically show the whole video because it's just, you know, and I'll stop it in between just to say a couple of bits, but ultimately it is some of the most compelling evidence. Um, and the fact that it's a kid, um, you know, and they show you pictures of this kid. He went through chemo like three times. Um, and the story is just incredible. Um, you know, and this was on... UK daytime TV, you know, how this video hasn't been taken on by some politician. And this is why we've got the wrong people in government. We absolutely have. Because this is uh, absolutely reliable testimony. 
Yeah, this is absolutely reliable, um, and there are hundreds, if not thousands, of stories like this. There will be millions uh, in the end. Um, so yeah, check out the story. I'll stop it at certain parts, but just check out the story. It's absolutely ridiculous on UK daytime TV. You know, this should be this should have been blasted on the news. Yeah. It was 2012, at the age of 12, that you then became one of a very, very exclusive club, one that you never want to get into. One in seven billion, five people on the planet have Langerhans cell sarcoma. What's that? Uh, there's not a lot of research into it, so I'm not too sure on what it is. It's, it's very confusing. Yeah. So the, the treatment you were facing that the doctors recommended was a bone marrow transplant? Yeah, it was extensive chemo and radiotherapy and then yeah, and then bone marrow transplant. And you didn't have just one transplant, this was three that you had to have. And so he says there, the, the doctors, all the doctors said to him was chemo. And he had three rounds of chemo. That's the first thing the doctors said, boom, hit this kid. This is a kid. And they hit him with three chemos, all right, back to back. Um, and you, you see what happens. And, and how, how did you get on with that? Well... They failed yeah. <laughs> the first three, um, but yeah, they're they're not too. It's not too trouble. So it's not it's not a big problem to have them. So but then after that, this is I mean, as a mum mm. because he then really began to suffer. You yeah, have to watch him suffer. How yeah. bad was it? Um, well, after the fourth transplant, they told us that you know the first three had failed, and and literally all they had was one more chance for him. They had one more bag of his own cells, no more. Uh, they were they were, you know, they stressed the the. The thing to us that there was no more chances after this and and unfortunately three days after he had his final transplant he trapped his fingers down the side of the bed and then picked up some infections oh. now obviously infections with no immune system whatsoever um and no way for an immune system to even even start to build within his body um he was literally being kept alive by antibiotics that's what they told us um he did get incredibly ill um he, throughout his whole treatment he'd been very happy and smiley and he'd always been tried to be quite jovial but actually um, those last those last couple of months were very very difficult um, he was in a lot of pain you were given I think three days yeah. three days a week at most so they gave this kid three days to live a week at most that's what his mum just said and you look at them pictures of that kid is it any wonder he was in the state he was? You see those pictures? He'd been blasted with radiation on four occasions. He'd had four bone marrow transplants, yeah? And been blasted with chemo and that. Like the, the, and they said to him that, that basically they had, they had nuked this kid within three days of his life. Yeah? They'd, they'd, they'd caned him with chemo until the point where they said, turn around to the mum and just said, yeah, he's ultimately got three days to live a week at most. That's what they said to her. All right. And then check this story out. Is what they told me when I asked them the, the, the time scale. But you planned your funeral, hadn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. To what extent? All of it. <laughs> what were uh, you going to do? Um, <laughs> it was going to be fancy dress and I'd chosen all the costumes for people and it was going to be quite embarrassing for some of the people to come, so, yeah. You actually said you wanted, you wanted to go. Yeah, I did. He was looking forward yeah. to it. After four years of treatment, it's, it's enough. Enough was After four years of treatment, even a child to turn around and say, enough is enough. I mean, how sad is that, man? How sad is that, that a child, you can have a child turn around and go, look, I've had enough. I want to die. You know, it makes you want to cry. Because, you know, no child should be put through that especially when there's no need to. And this is not an isolated incident, yeah? This is not an isolated, uh, isolated incident. Children, elderly people, lots of people are getting blasted with this radiation instead of using this plant, yeah? Get that into your head. And this is what people don't realise when they're watching these stories. They don't realise the implications of what they're hearing, but this is the implications of it, all right? So watch what happens now. Like I say, he was ready to die. This kid was turning around and said, I'd had enough, enough was enough enough and so this story then takes an in yeah. entirely different turn how did yeah. that happen um 
through lots of research, I'd done lots of research, obviously when his secondary cancer arrived and it was so unknown, I then st I turned to the internet and started looking and, and over, the, over the following months and, and couple of years afterwards, cannabis just kept popping up. People kept emailing me, you need to try this, you need to, and I said, but he hasn't got cancer, you know, the cancers are gone, this is now a completely different issue. It won't work for him, no, and I would dismiss it and dismiss it. And it actually came to the point where I was in hospital with Darren and he was so incredibly ill and really on a high dose of morphine that he was actually now on fentanyl, which they can't go any further than that. And it wasn't working against his hands and, and the other issues he had with his stomach. And I asked the doctor for Bedrocan, which is a, a cannabis-based pain relief that's available in Europe, um, because I'd done, I didn't... You know, I, you I wanted want to, to know. I wanted to go through the to, through the proper measures, and she actually told me we can't because it hasn't been licensed for children. So, you know, and and just, just a quick one. Don't you think that if a drug is going to be passed and they know that it works, that it should automatically be passed for children because they're the ones that probably are going to need it most? Just a little. Do you know what I mean? Everything's backwards. Everything is backwards. But anyway, sorry. Carry on with the story. And more of it came up, people just kept saying, and I thought, do you know what, what have I got to lose? And you've got nothing, no, nothing to lose at He's that point. He's dying anyway, you know, um, so... They just rejoin your antibiotics. At mm -hmm. this point, there was no other treatment. No. Um, so you took this, yep. and you, you asked him, and you said, yeah, yeah, yeah. let's I try was, it. I was happy to. What did you notice? How quickly did things change? <sighs> oh, my God. I mean, I, I honestly, the, the effect of it... Um, blew my mind it wasn't what I expected all I expected was done a little bit of research and some people use cannabis to kind of alleviate their anxiety and and some pain and that's what Darren was really experiencing yeah. on day 70 when they said there's definitely nothing in his bone marrow there's nothing there you've now just got to wait Darren got very anxious and said well how much longer do I have to wait um, they started to try and up the morphine introduce sleeping tablets yeah. and so that's when I actually gave it and within half an hour how to was, an hour how was it administered um, under the tongue sublingually um, it's just a tincture. Yeah. It's 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 not the oil that people talk about. It's just a tincture. And then what did um, you notice? We noticed within half an hour to an hour that he was yeah. just chilled out. He just relaxed. The anxiety stopped. He no longer was panicking, and he was able. Look at that kid. Look at that kid. He's different from the kid that you saw. She said within half an hour to an hour. Are you hearing that? That's the mum of this kid. This kid had been through. Four, four courses of chemo and he had a, and some next kind of cancer or some blood disease. He had an infections all in his hand because he trapped it in the bed. He was dying. He was ready to die. They said three days. Look at this kid within half hour or an hour. That should be enough alone. This is one story. Do you know what I mean? Where is the logic and where is the, you know... The, the, the truth and the facts in this world when, when, when we've got these things out in the open and they're just not being looked at. They're just being ignored and just saying, nah, that's not relevant. This is fucking ridiculous. You know what I mean? Look at this child. Listen to the rest of this story. Able to just, he was able to be compass mentors, which he wasn't able to be on the board. But health-wise, health-wise, I mean, actually, things being um, tested yes. against you, your white blood cells began to yeah, go was, up. Yeah, mm. after five days, obviously, they told us nothing in his bone marrow. So, gave it to him five days later, when the bandages came off his hand and we saw healthy fingers, which we, we were told there was no way they were under there. Um, when we saw a healthy finger, so the doctors started panicking. This was now day 75 after the transplant. And he was meant to only be there for three, three days. Yeah. yeah, and nobody has ever engrafted after 50 days. So day 75, and all of a sudden his white count has appeared. The doctors start running around frantically. Doctors from Bristol Children's Hospital were called in to uh, do some more blood tests, which I said, well, there's no point. You told me only a week ago there's nothing there. And obviously, yeah, and the blood count, it was there. It's very small, but it was there. And to test the theory, mm -hmm. you actually withdrew the cannabis After for a little yeah, while, did, and yeah. the blood count started to go I down have, again. Yeah. So yeah. Where... Uh, right, that, that's a lot to take in. But the fact that, you know, she started giving it to him because ultimately she wanted him to chill out and didn't want him to be anxious and didn't want him to have as much pain as he was going through. This kid had gone through four stages of chemo. The kid, the kid was fucked. Um... You know, she'd just given it to him for pain relief and just to get down the anxiety. What it actually ended up doing was doing that, plus it ended up boosting his immune system to the point where he was healing himself and the doctors were running around frantically. Um, she didn't, couldn't believe it, stopped the dosage and his, and his um, red, uh, white blood cells halved. You know, if that is not science in a nutshell that should say, right, this works...
yeah, then I don't know what is, all right? You know, it is ridiculous that we can have this story and, like I say, it, it not be like news and everyone know about this. Um, what I want to know is, as well, um, where are these doctors now? Anyone? Where are these doctors that experience this? They should all be lining up, queuing up to, to shout this from the rooftops and say, look, we know this cures cancer. You know, where are these doctors? All right. Where are where are they? Let's listen to the end of the story. All right. Where are you now? How are you now? Perfectly healthy. <laughs> my, mean, my bloods you, are all normal. You, you stress this. Yeah. This is this doesn't work for everybody. This is no. not a cure. No, this is not. something that worked for you. Yeah. And you could be prosecuted. Let's be honest. Well, the law, the, the under current laws in England, Wales cannabis is not registered as having any therapeutic value. Anyone using the drug, even for medical reasons, could be charged for possession. Yep. Uh, possession carrying a maximum sentence of five years in, uh, in jail or an unlimited mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. uh, fascinating. So, <laughs> if if that was your son, would you take the chance of five years in jail? I think most people would. The fact that you know he's what he's just said there was the law and where it stands at the moment. All right, you know that mum could have ended up in jail for saving her son's life, and there are doctors there that witnessed it and knew what was going on. You know, and, and they haven't come out in their droves to say, look what happened. This is what is possible. All right. And that is the, the cover up of it. But we're, we're busting through that now. We're breaking through that because of videos like this and things that are happening in the world. And people know now. Yeah, people know. Um, there's another video. And I think a lot of people have seen this video. Um, but if you haven't seen this video, it's another one that, that is just incredible. Uh, and it shows literally, is, again, how quick this works. Um, we, we already have, as human beings, in our brain, we already have these neuroreceptors that, um, that are built for CBD and THC. For cannabis, it is already in our genetic makeup. It is already in the makeup of our body to receive the chemicals from this plant. That's proven. That's proven science. So if we've got those receptors in our brain for it, why is it illegal and we can't have it? Because it completes our brain in some way, so we might need it. Something to think about. Um, but like I say, again, a lot of people have seen this video, but I just think it's incredible, uh, and we should watch this now. It is a guy with Parkinson's disease. Um, he gets given it. And it's just incredible. Hi, Larry. How are you? Come in. Come in. Good to see you. How are you feeling? It's been a bit of a rough week. Really? And the best way to take it is put it under your tongue and rub it in your cheek. Don't do too much. You're going to be asleep all, all afternoon. You know what you should do? No. Don't try to communicate. Just relax. See what happens. We know from animal experiments that the endogenous cannabinoid system is very important in regulating motor activity, the very type of activity that is impaired in Parkinson's disease. From animal experiments, we also know that boosting certain branches of the endocannabinoid system is helpful in relieving symptoms of Parkinson's. Finally, from anecdotal information, we know that certain patients who smoke marijuana experience relief of their symptoms. I think you're calmed down. So quickly. Isn't that amazing? He used just a single drop and his hands afterwards were rock steady and the dyskinesia left. Mm -hmm. It was swing back. It works most of the time. Four minutes. Four minutes is all it took from this guy on the left here. He literally couldn't move. His muscles were stiff to the point. They were spasming to the point where he couldn't move. Um, and within four minutes of him putting this oil inside his cheek, listen to what this guy says now. Unbelievable. It really is. It's worth it. Uh... <laughs> Did you guys see lunch? Are you hungry now? <laughs> yeah, 20, 20 a.m., yeah. 
Actually, I've first like me could really use marijuana. It makes, makes me pretty angry that sure, I can't right get it in my home <laughs> state. True. The number one frustration that I have is knowing that there is this untapped potential that comes from what marijuana is, te is teaching us to generate new medicines and being stuck because of financial issues or political issues, that is extremely frustrating. We now know that medical marijuana um, controls dyskinesia, um, and yet it's not, it's not available to us. And, and that's the thing. There, there are some people in the world that are using this and getting the benefits of this, but there's a hell of a lot of people that actually can't and that are suffering, but are seeing this and now are calling out and saying, right, no, we're not having this no more. And this is what is going to happen on the 23rd of February. This is what's going to happen at this legalization of cannabis for medicinal purposes bill. Um, this is what's going to happen. People are rising up and saying, no, this is it. We, you can't tell us no anymore. It's ridiculous. Um, you know? Uh, you got doctors coming out, you got psychologists, you got everyone coming out now and saying this. Okay? It's not just the kooks saying it anymore, it's just not the nutters and the druggies saying it anymore. Okay, this is a little video of a guy in Germany. Um, it's a uh, severe Tourette syndrome versus cannabis. Um, this video, you know, he's having really bad spasms um, and he sits down and he's able to, um, you know, just, just be. Um, it's it's really really um, crazy video. Um, I suggest checking that out. Severe so Tourette syndrome versus cannabis. Um, you know he can't eat. He can't do anything. Yeah, hallo. Mein Hyperaktivität lässt dann auch noch nicht mal zu, dass ich dass ich müde oder erschöpft schöp werde. Ich verbrenne eigentlich nur die ganze Zeit Energie und kann keine Energie zu 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 mich nehmen. Ja. Billy hält es nicht mehr aus und muss sein Medikament nehmen. Doch dies ist ein Joint. Billy raucht Cannabis, eine illegale Droge. Der darin enthaltene Wirkstoff THC hilft ihm, ein normaler Mensch zu werden. 20, 20 Minuten ungefähr. Das, das, das dauert immer eine Zeit, bis das im Körper auf, auf, aufgenommen wird bei mir. Die Wirkung ist verblüffend. Nach und nach verschwinden die Ticks. Wo andere Leute jetzt high werden, wird Billy zum ganz normalen Menschen. He said like within about 20 minutes it starts working and uh, like I say he had quite severe ticks and movements and that could be quite painful during the day, you know? If you've got these Tourette syndrome and you've got the um, like the guy from before with the Parkinson's, you know, with the shaking and stuff, it's very very painful. Um, Ich habe mehrere Medikamente getestet, auch testen müssen, viele schlimme Medikamente, wo ich meinen Körper noch schlimmer kon nicht kontrollieren konnte. Das ist das Spaßigen, wo mein Kiefer nach da ging, mein Kopf nach da, mein Arm nach da, meine Beine nach da. Das hat so weh getan, das war höllisch und hat sich drei, vier Tage gezogen. Cannabis hat keine Nebenwirkungen bei mir. Also ich fühle mich ganz normal wie jeder andere Mensch auch. Ich habe äh, keine Rauchzustände, ich kann vernünftig reden, ich kann mein Leben äh, organisieren, ich kann alles machen, was ich will. That's what he's saying. He's like, I've got no choice, you know. His life, uh, what kind of life is he going to have? Um, and this is the thing. People are making this choice now. Uh, people are making the choice. <coughs> Excuse me. They're saying, look, we want life. We're not going to, we're not going to, we're not going to deal with this shit anymore. Um, this is the last one. And this, this again, now people are listening because it's the mums and it's the nans and it's the granddads coming out and saying, oh, look, actually, this has really helped me. And this is, so people are listening. They didn't listen to the, the long-haired hippies or the Rasta man, you know what I mean? But now they're listening to these, these people, um, which is a good thing ultimately, but you know what I mean? It's, it's happening. Um, so, yeah, this is just the last one I'm going to chuck in. And this is a mum talking about her son. And he was autistic um, and he had Tourette syndrome. And uh, he, she started using a very weak tincture as well. It's like 15 milliliters or something. Um, and, it, and it worked. Um, so, yeah, check this out. The medical marijuana bill passed in Minnesota. Patients across the state say they've been helped. Joy Mitchell says her 16-year-old son, Josh, went from being violent and often pulled from school to being able to control himself. 
But as WCCO's Jennifer Merrily reports, the law still holds the teenager from Crosby back. Even a few months ago, a quiet, concentrated game of chess would have been out of the question for Josh Mitchell. The 16-year-old has autism and was diagnosed with Tourette syndrome. He'd bang his head really hard on the floor. Um, he took a planter outside on the deck and threw it at the sheriff. It was not good. The decision to try medical marijuana came last year when Mom Joy was at her wit's end. A year ago, I went to his caseworker with the county and I said, you need to remove him and put him in a home somewhere. It was her last resort. He had, had you know, threatened my older son with a knife and was escalating and getting too strong for me to restrain, um, having more episodes. And I didn't know what else to do. We had tried everything we could think of. Doctors prescribe Josh this cannabis oil for his Tourette's. He takes the medication every two hours. I just open up my mouth and I squirt it underneath my tongue and just one squirt usually. It helped me calm down more and um, relax more and stuff. I make these noises and it helps stop that too. So, What do you attribute this behavior change to? The cannabis oil. It's the only change we've made. I mean, it was very drastic, very fast. He used to yell, I hate my life, F my life, you know, all the time. And it went from I hate my life to I love my life. Last. How can you argue with that? How can you argue with a mum turning around and saying that their, their kid used to be screaming, I hate my life, I hate my life, and then turning around now, I love my life? I mean, that, that is testimony enough. Do you know what I mean? Why, why are we even needing to have this conversation? You know, I should sit all the politicians around and show them all these videos and just say, look, this is what you're doing. This is what your choices are causing the pain in people. So, uh, yeah, th this is what this video is about. Diligent Rascal. Hit me up on the Twitter, at a diligent rascal. That's at a diligent rascal. Uh, hit me up on the email. It's diligentrascalproductions at gmail.com. Um... And yeah, just hit me up. Hit me up on the YouTube. It's Diligent Rascal. Um, thanks again for watching. Check out my other videos. Also, please check out this video, my call on James O'Brien, talking about knife crime and ultimately talking about cannabis reform. Um, it's enough from me. It is the 8th of January, 2018. I am the Diligent Rascal. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll be getting at you with another topic very soon. Thanks for watching.